in today's weather, the most powerful central plains system, perhaps in the past year, moves into the Great Lakes. Some stations in Missouri overnight approached their all-time sea level pressure minimums. Right now, the Matt and Julian oscillation about to change from phase one to phase two. Typically around this time, this would be a favorable period for cold waves into the central U.S. But the Canadian prairie is completely out of steam, very little polar air production, and not much push behind it. There is the national surface map this afternoon. This low pressure area has taken a track from the Kansas City area last night into the Great Lakes. Central pressure right now about 980 millibars. That's just below 29 inches. Occluded front through the Great Lakes, the triple point around West Virginia and cold front extending southward into the Western Gulf. Here is the very latest information from the Great Lakes area. The lowest pressure is 28.95 inches at Traverse City. We have to go back to the hourly observations to get the sea level pressure, and they were reporting 980.4 millibars. You can see that a vast composition of this precipitation is in the form of liquid. And we've got 50s pushing up into Lake Huron. So the seasons are changing. But on the west side, cold advection into Wisconsin, the UP of Michigan, blizzard conditions at Marquette, and down into the Waterloo area, strong winds up to 51 knots at the current time. Checking out the weather across the northeastern U.S. this afternoon, comma cloud, and we mean comma cloud because this forms a comma shape, and there is the comma head out there in the Midwest. We can differentiate this cloud material a little bit by taking a look at the water vapor imagery. We see the warm conveyor belt right in this area here, dry slot on the backside, and in the comma head, this is the cold conveyor belt. We've got a strong northerly jet through that region. It was up to 70 knots earlier this morning across the northern plains, and it has shifted into Wisconsin and Illinois this evening, diminishing to 55 knots. I might as well show that to you so you can better understand it, right? So here's midnight last night, 70 knots out of the north at 850 millibars, that's about 5,000 feet, across Omaha. So that's certainly responsible for some of those blizzard conditions. And at 6 a.m. you can see that shifting eastward, diminishing to 55 knots this afternoon. And there it is from about La Crosse down to about Peoria, Illinois. So here's the current state of the watches and warnings. Blizzard warning until 1 a.m. in the UP of Michigan. One small blizzard warning out there in southwestern Minnesota into Iowa. That's expiring right around sunset. And we've got a mix of winter storm warnings in northern Wisconsin. Winter weather advisories down into Iowa. And we start picking up wind advisories and high wind warnings further south near the tip of that comma head. Winter weather advisory has been issued for the northern part of Lower Michigan towards Sault Ste. Marie that goes through tomorrow morning. Nothing really south of that except for wind warnings. We do have a flood watch in effect today and much of Thursday for western New York from Buffalo to Rochester and Oswego. The concern is half an inch of rainfall, spring-like warmth, and rapid snowmelt. Ice jam floods could develop this evening. And this little winter weather advisory up there in northern Maine until 10 p.m. an additional one inch of snow. I'm not sure if we have any viewers up there but anyway as we head south we've got severe weather watches and warnings starting to clear the area moving into the Chesapeake Bay area out towards the eastern coast of Virginia and North Carolina. And as you can see, a few winter weather advisories in the higher elevations of the Appalachians and the Cumberland Plateau. Across the southeastern U.S., a dynamic weather pattern. We see the dry slot from western Florida into the Appalachians, the warm conveyor belt on the Atlantic coast, and cold air advection flowing into Tennessee, Kentucky, and Alabama. 
Yesterday, that tornado outbreak that we were concerned about did not materialize. You probably saw the big YouTube channels calling for the end of the world in the Deep South on Tuesday. Well, some of those channels, they do this every time, and of course, sooner or later, they do get it right, because a broken clock is right twice a day. Is that good science? No, we kind of tone that down here. Last week, we did show the issues with the Cape Field that were indicated as far back as Wednesday. That was indeed a problem. But yesterday, we saw only, well, for the most part, downburst winds and a few tornado reports during the morning hours south of Tulsa, around Shreveport, and out around Woodville in East Texas. For today, however, widespread wind advisory is pretty much across the entire southeast this afternoon due to southwest winds gusting to 40 miles an hour. Currently, most of the gusts are running in the 20-knot range. Down south, the uh, tail end of this front, producing a few showers and thunderstorms down to Vero Beach. Back behind it, temperatures in the 70s, and they only drop off once you get into Alabama and central Georgia. In the southern plains yesterday, this strong frontal system produced a dust storm from west and central Texas into the I-35 corridor. And this is one of the strongest dust storms I can recall east of I-35. Here's what the skies look like in Austin, Texas, from one of my relatives down there. Kind of looks like a shot from the Mars lander, doesn't it? Well, that dust cleared out rapidly, clear skies across much of the southern plains. Wind advisories do continue from Tulsa to Alexandria to Beaumont eastward. Northwest winds gusting to 45 miles an hour through that region, continuing through this afternoon. But in the high plains of New Mexico, El Paso, red flag warning for tomorrow as southwest winds are forecast to rage once again up to 65 miles an hour. Some of us may remember that devastating wildfire at Ruidoso. That was, uh, I think, last June. We certainly don't want a repeat of that. We have high wind warnings across the Sangre de Cristos and the San Luis Valley around Alamosa Thursday, southwest winds gusting to 70 miles an hour. In the northern plains, blizzard warning does continue for some areas of Minnesota. All this area we mentioned earlier, it is starting to clear out and the winds are starting to subside. We did see a corridor of 8-inch snowfall amounts from just southeast of Minneapolis along Interstate 35 to the Iowa border. Cold air with 20s and 30s for highs in that region, but on the high plains it was warmer with lots of 40s. Further west, a new winter storm watch covers much of northwestern Nebraska tonight, Thursday and Friday. 5 to 8 inches of snow possible with 30 mile an hour wind gusts. This extends into eastern Wyoming and becomes a winter storm warning from Casper to Buffalo, Sheridan, over to the Riverton and Pinedale area that runs tonight, Thursday, Friday, 6 to 12 inches of snow on average. Massive area of winter weather advisories all through western Wyoming, southwestern Montana, eastern Idaho, including Interstate 80 from around Rollins over to Evanston, could be three to six inches of snow through Friday. The southwestern U.S. gets a reprieve, especially in the Four Corners area and New Mexico. Highs today ranged from the 40s in the Great Basin region to the upper 70s in the lower deserts. But as you can see out there to the west, another Pacific system is on our doorstep, pushing through California and Nevada. Not really seeing any big issues with the IVT values. That's a measure of the atmospheric rivers. I've got this data filtered below 300, so it's not really showing up, but it's going to be in that area right there. And just barely indicating anything at 6 p.m. So in that regard, not very strong. But the precipitable water values are running from about half an inch up to about 1.25, so certainly the potential for some widespread precipitation. 
but major changes on the way, 700 millibars, 10,000 feet showing the isotherm pattern. There's the zero degree isotherm, the freezing line at 10,000 feet running about like that. So Los Angeles, San Diego, about positive one, positive three. Then overnight, substantial cold air advection all the way down to minus 10 to minus eight. And that's going to drop that snow level all the way down from eight or 9,000 down to about 3,500 to 4,000. Here's the watches and warnings, of course, out there in New Mexico for tomorrow. There's the red flag warning. We've got wind advisories in northeastern Arizona. For tomorrow, we have winter weather advisories in Flagstaff and the north rim of the Grand Canyon. Could see some snow there. And, of course, as we go west, winter weather advisory in the central and southern Sierras. Winter storm warnings as well for the uh, San Bernardino Mountains, the San Jacinto Mountains, and winter weather advisories elsewhere, including the passes, Tejon Pass, Tachby Pass, all of that they could see anywhere from a trace up to a couple of inches of snow. Looking at the Pacific Northwest, we see this low pressure area offshore. That's associated with the cold advection that's working into California for tomorrow. For the Pacific Northwest, we're looking for 56 at Portland this afternoon, 52 at Seattle, fair skies there. No advisories except around Lakeview in the mountains. Could see three to five inches of snow this afternoon and overnight. And of course, out there in eastern and southern Idaho, we've got winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings on Interstate 84 and Interstate 15 from the Snake River to the Utah border. There could be two to six inches in the valley floors with 10 to 20 inches in the mountains. And that's the wrap up of the lower 48. We shift out into the Pacific. Stormy out in the Gulf of Alaska, as we would expect. Kind of a complex system here, one southern stream system and the southern bear clinic low up there in southwestern Alaska. Blizzard warnings continue in the western Seward Peninsula. This whole area has been quite stormy over the past couple of weeks. We also have a blizzard warning around Koktovik, just east of Prudhoe Bay. Most of the Alaskan interior looking pretty good under deep southerly flow this afternoon. Down in Canada, not much going on there. Some stagnant weather conditions around Smithers and Burns Lake. Then heading out into Quebec, they've got this approaching Great Lakes system. So snowfall warnings and winter storm warnings all the way from Sault Ste. Marie to Sudbury, Capus Kazing, Matagami, Chapes, and Lake Manicougan. Freezing rain warnings a little further south near Roberval and rainfall warnings around Quebec City to just west of Montreal and Ottawa for up to one inch of rain through Thursday. We do have a very dynamic weather pattern, so we might as well look at the mid-level dynamics. We do have a very progressive pattern, these troughs and ridges progressing rapidly from west to east. This is how it looks this evening, most of our stronger dynamics down in the Gulf Coast area, but our better moisture is found along the Atlantic coast, so this isn't really doing a whole lot. And of course, in the western U.S., large area of upper level lift coming into central California, that will shift gradually overnight into the deserts, and the cold advection will follow in its wake. The blue does not indicate cold air advection. That indicates subsidence, but in the mid-levels, there will be cold air flowing into that region. So with the stronger lift moving into the Rockies and the Four Corners area, it will be a pretty snowy day through the central Rockies. And as you go south, we get more into kind of a rainy pattern. We'll take a look at the forecast maps to kind of ferret out exactly where that is. As we go into Friday, some of the dynamics emerge into the Great Plains, Kansas, Nebraska. Of course, there will be some snow up there, but not much further south. The next trough comes in that almost slipped out of mind there. Where did that come from? Yeah, that started developing there in California for Thursday and Friday. So that's number two of the one-two punch. And that flows into Arizona, the Four Corners area for Friday, and into the Texas, Oklahoma area for Saturday. Anyway, that departs the picture very rapidly, ridging, building in, in its wake for late weekend, and another trough, just one after the other. This will cross California Monday and Tuesday, and another trough coming up for the middle of next week.
Now, this one is pretty deep, and this could move into Texas and put much of the southern plains and the deep south under very fast flow, strong low-level jet. In fact, the 850 millibar forecasts are indicating over 70 knots for that low-level jet, so there is severe weather potential. Exactly how much there is, of course, will depend on the thermodynamic picture. And that, of course, is too far out, so we're going to have to return to that later next week. So this is what we have for tonight, a mix of rain and snow in Nevada, solid snow through the Sierras, and rain all the way down through Southern California. As we go into later tonight, some of this rain starts changing over to snow above three to 4,000 feet. Going into tomorrow, widespread rain and snow through the Central Rockies, Warm front lifting north. In the northeastern U.S., cold air sweeps down into Pennsylvania and West Virginia. Highs will be in the 30s and low 40s through that region. And there will be some snow showers with that. Texas warms back up to the 70s and 80s, looking for 78 at Midland and 82 at San Antonio. But blowing dust may be back once again for New Mexico, the Panhandles, and West Texas. And you see that snow there developing across Nebraska into Iowa as this system tracks eastward. So this is where we're at for Friday evening when we return for the show. There's the number two of that one-two punch moving through Arizona. Snow across the Mogollon Rim and mixed precipitation south along the New Mexico-Arizona border. It will be much colder. We're looking for highs of 59 at Phoenix, 66 at Yuma, with 33 at Flagstaff. Texas warms up into the mid-80s at Austin and San Antonio, mid-90s, Laredo to Del Rio. Some are really trying to get a jump on things. And then we go into Friday night. We're going to see snow tracking through Albuquerque along Interstate 40 towards Amarillo, but that snow will be winding down as the main baroclinic zone shifts to the east, and we get more of a classic comma cloud formation across the Arklatex into the deep south. For Sunday, some cold air pushes into the Great Lakes, Minnesota, and North Dakota. And then Monday, an even stronger surge coming south. In the western U.S., a new Pacific weather system comes inland, Looks like, once again, snow levels will be down to about 4,000 in the Cascades, maybe five to 6,000 in the Sierras. So winter storm warnings will return once again. Then for Tuesday, cold air lurks up to the north. Highs will be in the 30s and 40s in North Dakota, continued warm in the southern plains, 80s from Laredo to Abilene. And a new Pacific weather system starts Moving on to the coast, there it is right there for Wednesday and Thursday. And this is what we're watching for the possibility of severe weather in the southern U.S. And that's going to be another deep system, 973 millibars there in Kansas. So we're definitely getting into that season there of deep central U.S. low pressure systems. And I think blowing dust will be back once again. And that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. A special thanks to our newest Patreon supporters, Chris Corwin and Jason Burns. Thank you very much for stepping up to the plate and making sure this program can continue. All right, we'll see everybody back here once again on Friday for the next episode. Take care and have a great middle of your week. Thanks. Thanks.